In this lesson, we're going to talk about liver function tests. And when we do liver function tests, we look at multiple different values. The first three, three that we look at are the liver enzymes, specifically aspartate aminotransferase or AST, alanine aminotransferase or ALT, and then alkaline phosphatase or ALP. And those are going to be the three levels that we look at. And we're going to look into the ins and outs of those here in just a little bit. But before we get started, here are the normal levels. So you've got your AST, which is 12 to 37. Your ALT is 13 to 69. And your ALKFOS is 40 to 130. And these are all units per liter. We also include these other tests and liver function tests. We take a look at calcium, which is 8.4 to 10.2. You got your total bilirubin, which is 0.1 to 1.2. Your albumin and your total protein, these are both proteins measured in grams. So you got 3.5 to 6 on your albumin. You've got your total protein, which is 6 to 8. And then you've got your glucose, which is 70 to 115 milligrams per deciliter. Now let's get to the nuts and bolts of liver function tests. So I'm sure you're looking at all this and saying, what the heck is going on? Well, let's go through that. The column on the left is going to be the enzymes that are specific to liver function, and we're going to monitor these. The column on the right are things that are uh, affected by liver disease, and we're going to go into that in just a minute. And if we look at the values of AST, ALT, and ALKFOS, you can see here that they're all produced in more than one place other than the liver. And what that means is if you have elevations in any one of these enzymes and not the others, you should, you should suspect something else besides the liver. And I'll give you an example. So let's say you have an elevation of your AST. Let's, well, let's look at this. AST, ALT, and ALKFOS. So let's say your AST is elevated, but your ALT and your ALKFOS are normal. Well, you need to look at something other than the liver as the issue. So AST affects heart, skeletal muscle, kidneys, brain, and red blood cells. So you would look at other things here. Now let's say, uh, let's say your AST and your ALKFOS are normal and your ALT is elevated. Well, you would look at something like your heart, your muscles, or your kidneys for a cause of that, uh, that elevation other than the liver. So your ALKFOS is produced in your liver and bone, but it's also uh, indicative of congestion issues. So if you have uh, gallbladder or biliary issues going on with your patient, you may see an increase uh, in elevation there. If you have overall liver failure, you're going to see increases in all of these values together. But the big takeaway here is that one single increase in one of the three values does not mean that it's a primary liver issue. So you need to look at them at trends over time. You need to look at your patient and you need to look at all of these together. Let's take a look at these other values. So when we look at calcium, we're going to look at liver function tests because it's associated with albumin. So it's going to follow that albumin where it goes. Uh, and because albumin and other proteins are made in the liver, we also look at them uh, to monitor to make sure that they're being produced appropriately. Also, we look at total bilirubin because that gives us an indication as to if there's uh, some sort of uh, liver dysfunction um, because the liver is responsible for uh, breaking down the bilirubin and sending it to the GI tract. And then we also look at glucose because it's stored in the liver as glycogen. And we have several different lessons on all of these particular labs. So I want you to go check those out so you can understand them more in detail. But for our purposes of the liver function test, this is how they play a role in, uh, in this particular process. For our liver function test, we're going to submit these in a green top tube. And you're also going to want to make sure that your patients are fasting so that your patient's nutrition doesn't get in the way of the test. So what happens if all of these values are, are elevated? Well, let's... Again, we have to look at the liver being the primary cause. So let's say you have that ALKFOS, you've got the ALT, and you've got the AST, and they're all elevated, right? So you can look at things like hepatitis. It could be viral or infectious. Uh, you have different types of cirrhosis, which is like uh, the scarring of the liver. So you're going to have different uh, reasons for that happening. There's also a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's going to... Um, that's going to cause uh, changes in your uh, liver levels. You've got different types of toxicities. There's also another condition called Wilson's disease or um, copper storage disease. So the liver is responsible for eliminating copper, but when the liver is impaired, it's not going to be able to because of this autoimmune disease. So you get this buildup of copper and it's going to cause this increase in those liver values. It's a chronic disease typically managed with medications and a lot of patients cope well with it. The other reasons for elevated liver function values are going to be gallbladder disease. So if there's inflammation of the gallbladder and inflammation of the bile duct or they have gallstones, that's going to cause this increase in those liver values. Overall, um, uh, cancer is another reason that you're going to also get some uh, increases in those liver values as well. Overall, decreased liver values is not very common, when, but when there is, it's usually attributed to some sort of malnutrition. So by improving your patient's diet and nutrition, you can help improve those liver function tests. 
So for this lesson, we focused really on gastrointestinal and liver metabolism, as well as our lab values when we're looking at liver function tests. So let's recap. First, remember that there are lots of components to these liver function tests. Increases in single numbers do not in, uh, particularly indicate liver disease. What you need to look at look at them is to look at them all together. You're going to submit them in a green top tube and make sure that your patient is fasting. Also, increased values can indicate uh, primary liver disease, and that could be chronic or acute, but you want to look at all of those values together. So that's going to be our lesson for our liver function test. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today, and as always, happy nursing.